Okay, um, our next talk is Eva again. You probably know her from yesterday, where she introduced us uh, the open hardware projects at CERN. And she mentioned the White Rabbit project yesterday there, and um, uh, the, the goal there is to have a really sub nanosecond synchronization with all the equipment. And you can imagine that the Large Hadron Collider, for example, is pretty huge, and you have some long distance signal. Um, there on the wires, so you really need good hardware and uh, some high technology to have a sub nanosecond synchronization, and we hear about it. And this is an open hardware project, so you can build it at your home if you are experienced enough. And uh, yeah, go on. Okay, so today I would like to introduce you to the White Rabbit uh, Network, which is the result of uh, the collaboration between several different institutes and companies. I will start with a short introduction, continue with an overview of the White Rabbit uh, technology, uh, then go through the implementation and support, support and finish with some conclusions. So, so many application areas for real-time communication, communication systems like uh, factory automation, network control, or distributed data acquisition systems require the execution of operations with very tight time constraints. This becomes even more difficult for distributed data acquisition systems as uh, the big distances between the nodes uh, generate long transmission delays. And finally, on systems like that, usually the dynamic changes to the number of nodes is desired, but it's not always that easy to implement. Let's uh, take as an example a, a big and a complex machine like the LHC with uh, thousands of uh, sensors and actuators installed all around it. And let's now consider three uh, different uh, nodes on three completely different locations in the machine that need to react on the exact same moment so as to give a, a concise uh, image of uh, the system on that particular moment. Now, with the currently existing network, uh, the different distances of each one of the nodes from a reference clock in the control room, as well as the fact that uh, there are free running oscillators on the nodes that are running independently, makes it essential to have a manual calibration operation before uh, considering such a system fully functional. With the White Rabbit, uh, transmission delays and clock offsets are automatically compensated, and we manage to have a common notion of time in the entire network automatically. Another example application comes from National Instruments this time, and uh, their project on measuring aircraft noise emissions you can see on the right-hand side uh, their installation with more than 600 uh, ground-based microphones. And with the currently existing network, uh, the installation is limited to an area of 100 meters by 100 meters. With the White Rabbit, on the other hand, we can uh, manage to create farms with thousands of sensors installed over several kilometers. So White Rabbit is an extension to Ethernet that offers deterministic and reliable data delivery and also manages to have all the nodes uh, synchronized within uh, sub-nanosecond accuracy completely transparently to the data exchange. Let's start with the Ethernet part. So here's an image of a White Rabbit network. There are White Rabbit nodes and uh, White Rabbit switches. There can be up to 2,000 nodes. Uh, the physical medium can be copper or fiber, and the uh, distance between two network devices is up to uh, 10 kilometers. The bandwidth of the communication is uh, one gigabit per second. Uh, current version of the switch offers 18 ports. The network offers a minimal uh, uh, reconfiguration effort, and the addition and removal of nodes can take place dynamically. Also, White Rabbit is uh, uh, compatible with the Ethernet standard and uh, supports the integration of uh, non uh, White Rabbit uh, switches and nodes. Finally, the switches support features and protocols of any middle range price uh, uh, Ethernet switch. And White Rabbit supports deterministic and reliable delivery of those Ethernet packets. Uh, starting with determinism, this is a warranty that the transmission delay of a packet from its source to its destination will uh, not exceed a certain uh, boundary, regardless of the amount of switches it has to traverse or the uh, traffic in the network. Uh, this upper bound is, uh, depends on the exact uh, uh, network, its time, and uh, for White Rabbit it can be verified and analyzed by um, seeing at the publicly available source code. 
Reliability now refers to the ability of a system to provide its services under both uh, routine and abnormal conditions. And White Rabbit supports topology redundancy. So every device is connected to a network through more than one different paths. And if uh, a path breaks, the recovery through the other one, through the redundant one, takes place fast enough so that there is no data loss. And there is also data resilience. So Ethernet, uh, the, the, the data frames uh, through forward error correction schemes are translated to several different frames that travel independently in the network. And even if some of the frames get lost, the recovery of the information through the remaining ones is still uh, possible. Let's finish now with the synchronization part. So synchronization is having a common notion of time in the entire network, and White Rabbit uh, provides sub-nanosecond levels uh, in parallel and transparently to the uh, data exchange. There are two uh, main uh, technologies used uh, together, synchronous Ethernet and uh, the White Rabbit Precision Time Protocol, and I will give an overview of uh, each one of them right now. So here is an image of a network as we have seen it before, and now on top there is the timing master. And the timing master is uh, just uh, a white rabbit node or a switch that it's connected to a very precise clock. Now the rest of the devices, switches and nodes, have their own uh, free running oscillators. And the nominal value of the oscillators is 125 megahertz, but since they're different and they're running independently, there can be small uh, uh, drifts between them. Now the idea of uh, synchronous ethernet is to encode all the data that is traveling in the network using the very precise clock of the timing master. The slaves recover the clock on their physical layer and they base their timekeeping on it. So like this, taking advantage of the data exchange and without uh, any extra traffic, we managed to have all the devices measuring time with the exact same rhythm, having a common notion of frequency. Uh, however, this doesn't mean yet that they have the common notion of time. So for example, uh, this uh, first rising edge uh, that, let's say, translates to one o'clock uh, for the timing master may arrive a bit later on one of the switches and translates to a different time, and even later to one of the nodes further down. And it's here when the precision time protocol comes in. So let's focus only on two devices, the master and the switch. Here is the first rising edge on the master that arrives a bit later to the switch. And also temperature fluctuations uh, may make this uh, difference drift uh, even further. So the precision time protocol initiates the exchange of some very precise uh, hardware timestamps between the master and the switch. And the switch gathers messages and timestamps and after some calculations, it manages to compensate uh, offsets and drifts and um, calibrate itself to the time of the timing master. Coming back to the network, we have seen that with synchronous Ethernet, we have the same frequency, but we don't have the same time yet. And after the PTP, we managed to have this common notion of time in the entire network. So putting everything together, we have White Rabbit, which is a large-scale monitoring and control network that offers deterministic and uh, robust uh, data delivery. At the same network, we can have sensors that need to tag, uh, uh, that need to be tagged with very precise timestamps. We can have uh, actuators that need to react on very precise moments. And we can also have uh, monitoring and management uh, devices that do not require these uh, real-time properties. The network offers a minimal uh, reconfiguration effort, so the addition and removal of nodes can take place dynamically. Uh, let's continue now with the implementation and support. So as we have seen yesterday, uh, White uh, Rabbit is uh, part of the open hardware repository, so all the uh, design files and source code are publicly available. The components of a White Rabbit network are um, available from several different uh, companies, and support is also provided by them. And several uh, institutes uh, like uh, LASSO in China, a cosmic ray observatory, and uh, the KM3Net, and a Trino detector in the bottom of the Mediterranean are some of the users of White Rabbit technology. 
And as we have seen it so far, a white uh, rabbit network is composed of switches, nodes, uh, the timing master, and uh, uh, copper or fiber links. Here is an image of uh, the white rabbit switch, a uh, current version of it with 18 ports. Uh, the white rabbit node comes in the form of an IP core that can be easily integrated in any FPGA based design. An example application of a white rabbit node comes from uh, national instruments and their uh, PXI uh, white rabbit node that receives uh, data and timing information from the white rabbit network and distributes them to the uh, rest of the models inside the PXI crate. Another example comes uh, from us. Uh, it's a spec board uh, and it's designed as a carrier board and it can be combined with any kind of mezzanine like ADCs, DAGs or time to digital converters. The master is a, a node or a switch that is connected to a very precise clock. And finally, uh, the same optical link is used for both uh, transmission and reception of data. And let's have a look now at an example application. So here's the white rabbit uh, node. We take for this example the spec board that in this case, let's say it's connected to an analog to digital converter mezzanine. And the ADC, let's say it's taking measurements from a thermometer. The spec board is also housing a, a, a Xilinx Spartan 6 FPGA, where we instantiate the white rabbit core. And the white rabbit core is taking data and timing information from the white rabbit network and is making them available to the user core, which is the application specific part of the design. And an example between the communication of the white rabbit and the user core is, for example, Etherbone. Uh, so uh, let's consider an Ethernet uh, packet. Uh, it arrives to Etherbone and then gets translated to the equivalent wishbone signals that are, uh, it can be easily handled by the user core. Having now uh, the image of an entire network, let's consider uh, several nodes, switches, and on the top, the data and timing master. And now let's say that uh, all the nodes need to react on uh, uh, the exact same moment. So uh, the master needs to send a message, which in comparison to the other uh, Ethernet uh, uh, solutions is not the trigger itself, but it's an instruction on when to trigger. And this message will arrive to the different nodes on different times, but still because of the deterministic aspect of uh, the White Rabbit network, there is an upper bound um, on this uh, delay latency. So if the master respects uh, this upper bound, and since there is uh, the common notion of time on the entire network, the nodes will indeed react on the exact same moment. Let's finish now with a few conclusions. So as we have seen, White Rabbit is deterministic and reliable Ethernet that on top of that offers transparently sub-nanosecond synchronization. It's easy to use and it's uh, based on uh, well-established standards. It's part of the open hardware repository, uh, so uh, all the source uh, files and uh, uh, design uh, is available and parts of the design can be simulated and analyzed and uh, uh, corrections or uh, modifications can be uh, done if it's needed. Thank you. So, do we have questions? Yes. Before the questions, maybe I need to mention that unfortunately myself I have not been uh, directly working on White Rabbit. I will try to do my best to my answers, but my colleagues that have been uh, designing White Rabbit were not available this period. So. Oh, okay. Well, no, no problem. I'll, I'll just ask you anyway, in case you know. I mean, you've got node and route redundancy inside the White Rabbit uh, network. Um, are you using a particular uh, mesh networking implementation for that, for the ad hoc part, or I mean, is it IPv6 using like autoconf for? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I didn't are, are you using a mesh networking um, implementation, a mesh um, networking implementation for the route or the node redundancy or anything like this? Oh well, I'll get your I'll get your colleagues' details yes, then. I think that would be better. Uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, National Instruments as uh, one of the suppliers for uh, uh, some of the hardware, uh, but you also mentioned uh, some specific, uh, well, uh, your own hardware. Uh, do you uh, use also different brands of Ethernet FIs uh, that actually are integrated, uh, or well, I saw uh, SFP well, uh, integrated in the Spartan 6, or it's also maybe also a bit too technical? <laughs> 
I think from what I know, and from what uh, I, I know for the um, for the devices that we are using at CERN, it, it should be one brand of uh, Phi chip. But then, of course, it's an open project, so anyone can use anything they want. But for CERN, it should be one. So please wave your hands so we see you. Yeah. Hello. You mentioned uh, the main timing. Uh, it is in, uh, there is a picture of satellite and maybe it's a GPS or is it a, so you are using GPS as a time base? Yes, uh, okay. uh, uh, one of uh, the solutions can be this, but one can, if you want like lower levels of uh, synchronization or precision, you can use any kind of clock and it, it will be this that will be propagated to all the nodes. It can also be used as... It can be also a local oscillator, like you can also use a local oscillator if you don't have very high requirements. Uh, from one of the application, it can be used as a um, main timing clock for uh, broadcast audio or things like that. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm sorry, I couldn't participate in the open hardware project yesterday, but what is your experience with open hardware? For us, it was a really a clear uh, option going towards open hardware. We could not afford that certain having black boxes, and we had many uh, nasty uh, situations uh, depending on vendor lock-in. So we decided to go towards open hardware, and we, we are seeing that it works pretty well, especially on this project. There is many other institutes that are collaborating. There is companies that are interested in, in, in also in collaborating and building their own uh, products. So we are seeing that uh, it moves quite fast, and at least for the CERN, uh, for CERN, it's... Thank you, thank you. Uh, on the topic of the deterministic maximum latency uh, and the redundancy between nodes, in the event that uh, a connection between two nodes breaks, uh, is the maximum latency recomputed and reported to, to the uh, respective control systems and, and so forth? Again, it's better maybe if I didn't reply to that. Uh, yeah. I see one more question here. So maybe we can have some email contact for these yeah, specific yes, questions yes. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Um, about the, 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 the stretch chart, how far you can go, you said 10 kilometers b between two nodes. Yes. And up I to 2,000 nodes. That, um, that's what at least would cover the certain needs and uh, what uh, we are testing for. The the technology for. But it might be more or what? Uh, I, I believe so and I think uh, uh, Lasso for example in China is uh, planning to increase it Okay. because they, they need more nodes and uh, bigger distances. Okay, because I also saw that it was the are the switches connected into that because otherwise you can actually have something stretching the entire globe. I'm sorry? Because it, it, if it's 2,000 times 10 kilometers, you can actually reach the, all, all, both, yeah, yeah, like both yeah, yeah. sides of the world. Um, um, so uh, that... I think the numbers that I put there have to do with the, the, actually the CERN application, the CERN needs, and uh, how we are planning to use it. Okay. Yeah. So just a question coming from IRC. Uh, do you have any plans to bring it to IEEE standardization? Mobile telecom operators have similarly tight timing requirements to synchronize their base stations in new LTE networks. Uh, actually, regarding the IEEE, uh, I think it was a couple of months ago that there was a, a PTP IEEE conference in the US, and uh, there are big talks about uh, the White Rabbit standardization. Of course, it's a big process, and I think it will take uh, like a few years. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I think that's it. Uh, thank you for your talk. And as, you, as we've learned yesterday, this is open hardware and there is this project page. So if you have further questions, I think it's a good, good uh, point for more information to go on the website. Yeah. And I think you will forward email questions as well. So, yeah. Um, thank you.